I've been listening to this song for like the past like five times. Just constantly on loop as I work. And I have to say that it perfectly encapsulates encapsulates my mood at the moment. You know, kind of lonely, kind of sad a bit. But you know, I've got something to do. This image that of guts that I look at reminds me of the story behind it, where guts helps this little girl go from like her father trying to kill her effectively and sacrifice her to the demon gods, and he's trying to help her get away from that and go from a, a trapped little princess in a tower into a person who's free almost and someone who survives but she hates him and she vows to kill him because what from she, what from like, her POB he's responsible for her, for her father's death he's the boogeyman And this poses like an interesting sense for me in self improvement. So that's all I think about making money, self improvement, trying to be better. Maybe sometimes I think about Spurk shit, like, you know, manual or a bit of anime, maybe some Star Wars. I'm a human too. But irregardless of that, what I think about, I, I, I how do I juxtapose this to how a lot of individuals are in self improvement? You. Instead of improvement, want your friends to improve too, right? You want them for, to go from spugs to, you know, people that are respectable. You want them to go from geeks, gamer geeks, nerds, he's like down of the, the bottom of the barrel Kremlin. You want them to go from here to here. And then you preach to them about some improvement. And then they hate you for it. Just like that. And this is how you feel at the end. You feel like a piece of shit. You feel like a piece of shit. Which is great. Congratulations, you learned something. And what you learned is that most people cannot be saved. The majority of people willingly choose to stay in their mediocre position. There is no desire to change. There is no desire to become better. There is no desire to live a better life. You know why? Because it's uncomfortable to think about. What's comfortable is the video game. What's comfortable is the PS4 that I have right here that I've actually got addicted to recently. Only today I start processing my clips and realizing, yeah, I can't play this anymore. Dealing with some old clips that really have no merit to me. Backing them up on some backup storages, uploading to YouTube, whatever, whatever. Processing them, right? You know, I was listening to a live stream of me and my friends, and I really wanted to preach to these friends. I really like these guys. I really like these guys, and we always used to play games for a good, like, I don't know, a few months, perhaps six months, on and off in the beginning, like the first six months of the year, and like 2021, and then kind of on and off and off again. But then 2022 really skyrocketed. Like the last six months of 2022, maybe the eighth I started, like the seventh or eighth. And then it continued on to the first of January 2023, and I just, I just stopped. I think that I'm not gonna say something rude, like I, I grew them, but I grew them. I grew them. I didn't mean to not play anymore. I'm not going to say something as ruthless as like I outgrew them because the reality is I outgrew them. They're still playing the same games. They're still doing the same spurg shit. They haven't changed. They might watch this video. I might I might, I might even send it to them. All the speeches, all the bravado, all the motivation I can give them in the world. The same. Think about that. And I was seen as the weirdo in that group for a moment. I was seen as the outcast. I felt like this. And 
Yeah, I learned a valuable value lesson that is, and you can't save everyone. You don't save those who don't want to be saved. And I, I, I think I've said this in a video before, but I think it needs to be reiterated with a different story because this is such a powerful topic. I don't think any, not enough people talk about. I mean, Hamza made two videos in it. They're not your friends, and what to do if everyone hates you. I watched that video. But it wasn't like what I wanted to hear. It wasn't within my particular, how can I say this? Not necessarily niche, but it wasn't in, in my particular worldview. I didn't feel hated as much as I felt outcast. And within my other group, I felt outcast too. And, you know, until they saw results from me, they were like, oh, whoa, he's like, uh. Until they saw results from me, they were like, whoa, he's a, he, he's a weirdo, and. Oh, he's an Andrew. Asian and retain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, a weird thing about self improvement is that the majority of people encourage you to be selfish. And this is like a weird thing, right? They encourage you to exercise, that's selfish. There's a whole stigma behind selfishness, I'm not going to go into that. They encourage you to exercise, which is selfish, because that's for you only, and that takes a lot of time out of your day. You have time you could have spent with the boys and PS4, yay! Oh no, I spent exercising. Working on starting a business, working on a business, focusing on your career, selfish. Pursuing the best relationship you possibly can for yourself, selfish. Mental health, selfish. All they, all they, all they like, all they promote is selfish activities, and they wonder why it's such a lonely journey. And that's where we come in, uh, the idiots that are us. We decide, yeah, I really want my friends to be a self improvement too because I found this thing and it, like I really like it and you know it's, it's that it's that one thing that I see it and I feel really inspired and motivated and what do you mean? Going up on Hans's point, those people are not compatible with you. Those people are not by any means your people, they don't speak your language. They might speak the same language as you do English. But they don't speak your language. They might speak your tongue but not your language, right? And like I understanding that really really helped me differentiate to people that are genuinely serious and that are not serious. Like I I really distance myself from people that you know that play the games and all that type of stuff. I really distance on those people. And with the the guys, I know a guy who's like 26, other guys like 20 something, maybe older than me, same my age group roughly, only three years older than me, three, four years older than me, but he's within my age group and he's playing games. What do you mean? No one's 26 playing games, and I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I don't want to be like you at all. I don't want to be 26 still playing games. I don't want to be 26 doing this shit anymore. I know that my choices have consequences. And I would rather not have the consequence of, yeah, I'm 30 years old and I'm like level 2 million in fucking Apex Legends, but I'm an only IRL, so I spend more time on Apex Legends as a result. I would rather not have that at all. And I, I could I could give them motivational stuff, more like motivational speeches, like tell them like change their life and that's right. But it won't it won't happen. Come on, let's be real. It won't happen. And I won't I won't even bother. I, why would I bother? It's a waste of my time. You know, I this type of song has many ways to interpret it, which I really, which is why I really, really like art because there's many ways to interpret art, right? Well, this song has many, many ways to interpret it. You could be feel, you could have your feelings of sadness and loneliness accentuated immensely with this type of song. My pain is constantly sharp, <laughs> and my punishment eludes me. I have learned nothing but myself, <laughs> and then the. <laughs> it could accentuate that feeling of sadness and loneliness, or it, you could have it. It could have it make you realize something. It could have it make you. How do I say this? Almost laugh. It's almost kind of funny to me. This type of song. Some people feel it could be lonely and sad and. Just their, their, their emotions because I thought this before as well. I, I would listen to these type of songs like um, the Melonina songs. You don't smile, do you? From Blade Runner. You know that you guys know that one. 
<laughs> so stupid. It's just it's just stupid videos, and it just congregates lonely people that are sad and you know depressed, kind of and anxious all the time. Which well, I was for sure, and I do get those feelings. By all means, I do get those feelings. But do I let them affect me to the point where it affects my action? No. No, not anymore. Not now. Not within the next five, ten years. Not within the next, next three decades. Not for the rest of my life. You know, the first key to power in the 48 Laws of Power is to master your emotions. If you're sad and you're lonely and you're depressed and you're anxious, kind of, and what you... What you do as a result is, oh, I'm so sad. I'm gonna put the song on. Then you won't go anywhere with your life, and you'll continue to be sad and lonely. You'll continue to suffer. That's the way it goes. That's not me ranting. Catch you guys in the next video.